Old sister moon showing off again. The actual dimension doesn't change. But when seen, more candle power. <laughs> um, I don't inhale, just helps me think. And seen from uh, in juxtaposition with earthly objects, she looks bigger. So that's the sister moon waning just above the rooftops. Stand firm. This is the Carthusian monks being called to midnight vigils at La Grande Chartreuse au sud-est de la France dans les montagnes, in the southeast of France in the mountains. I think there are about 20, one of them. Um, it's pretty much an enclosed order and the date that comes, sort of founding date, is 1084, 1084, the year 1084, by St. Bruno. And I just find it very beautiful. It's in Latin, Gregorian chant. And then they read from the Bible in French, which I also like, so... This is about 53 minutes worth. Uh, I think they actually do this <coughs> every night for two hours, for heaven's sake. So it's pretty rigorous, and they really start at midnight, too. Um, but they live a very uh, sort of peaceful life dedicated just to loving God. Whereas I live in the world pretty much. Stand firm. Right, well, here we are. Ah, back end of March. Spring in England, 2022. As it happens, it's the 22nd, so if you write the date, 2-2-0-3-2-0-2-2, lots of twos. Um, and this, just, I don't know, the world economy, there's a good world service program that starts at, uh, finishes off Radio 4 with the, the uh, shipping forecast and then 1 a.m. here in England, um, starts this, uh, Jamie Robertson is the presenter very good journalist and they have someone in the Far East from India or Singapore or Hong Kong or somewhere. So they're already daytime and then they have someone from America generally. So they're still uh, the night before it's business. They're discussing the world and affairs and oh wheat being in shorter supply, Ukraine and Russia are sort of not there in this monstrous
completely unnecessary, one might say. War. <coughs> and gas and oil and world supplies of stuff and prices going up and all of that is going on in the world. So for me, the paradox as a Christian is that we are blessedly guided by Christ. It's in the end time passages in Matthew, Mark and Luke and elsewhere. Stand firm in your faith. Come what may. To those who genuinely believe in loving God through Christ, all these things are foretold. And you won't be afraid. So the beautiful passage I found in the letter 1 Peter, the letter, the first letter of Peter, chapter 4, verses whatever, it's not very long, it's towards the end. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out all fear. God has his purpose for everything. Whatever one's lot is, I virtually every day play a rendition of Psalm 100 and 39, sung beautifully by this uh, Scottish group, and verse 16 is, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be, which it's a whole philosophical discussion behind that. Does one have free will? Or is one's life uh, sort of laid out before... Well, that's what's the point of us, and how did Isaiah prophesy the coming of Christ 700 years before Christ came? And it's there, chapter 53 of Isaiah, who prophesizes the coming of Christ. More often than not, I know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing in the afternoon. As it happens, I've just had an absolute blooming awful stab in the back by some blasted secretary at the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital, Stanmore. I don't know where that came from. I've been waiting for this big left knee operation, so I've got my place, this lovely place, provided some further trouble with the neighbours, warm and dry and sorted, and I can afford it and all the rest of it. food nearby and so on and so forth, facilities, post office, bank, very nice supermarket within walking distance, all of that. And then lo and behold, I ring about my knee, so that's the other big thing in my life this year, <laughs> and she tells me the secretary I've been thoroughly unpleasant to her for the last two years. Okay. Well, that puts a spanner in the works. That's the team. She's one of the uh, sort of facilitators, if you like, of these operations. She's the pre-op secretary. Well, they all talk to each other. You don't want to go into a big operation with the surgeon feeling hostile towards you because you've been hostile towards their staff. I mean, I'm, I'm on the verge of pulling out of the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital altogether. And they are one of the best in the world. I've worked there. They fix other people's mistakes. It's the same surgeon, a Mr. Rob Pollock, I won't mention the secretary's name, 
who did the operation originally on Monday the 6th of September 2010. It's failing and needs revision. It's a big op. Well, I've got this blasted heart business. I'm waiting for a cardiologist. I've had this eight months hoiked out of my life back <laughs> in the porch by the Baptist Church. In St Albans, so all of that's sort of been on hold, and I'm waiting for a cardiologist at Watford General, and I'm yet to be assigned one up here or whatever. So, from thinking all was well and just settling in and tickety boo, after a couple of phone calls yesterday morning, I suddenly find. <laughs> All of that's on its head. Ooh. Well, I'm alive, so tap titty. The fall, I fell off my horse originally, so that's ooh, my former wife being the major contributing factor to that. Hoiking off with herself, my son, my home, <laughs> the works. <laughs> I do know how to, used to, no, well, I don't ride anymore, but I, I know how to fall off a horse then and say it without breaking anything generally. And then Christopher Reeve is dead, Superman the actor. Whereas I'm not. <laughs> sorry, chaps. Awfully, awfully sorry. I really do try and be civilised and speak to people and treat people as an individual person, I do not talk down to people. Yes, maybe I've got a big strong voice sometimes, but I really do try so bloody hard to be polite and, and respectful and all the rest of it, you know. They have these signs up now all over the show, don't they? On, on public transport and, and public places and businesses and you know, which do you want? A nice, pleasant, smiley face or being hoiked off with your hands in handcuffs by the police because you were offensive to the whoever? Well, that's a bit counterproductive, isn't it? I'm staggered. I've been talking to this secretary periodically, all the while waiting with my knee progressively getting worse. I'm on crutches in the house more often than not. And some blooming little flippity jibbit <laughs> tells me I'm an offensive human being, basically. Thanks, or no thanks, well. And it might foul up the whole blooming process just because of that one blasted little secretary. Hmm. Enough of my woes. I'm alive. Awfully, awfully sorry. It does make me feel like that. Apologise for existing at all. Such a awkward, horrible, nasty, nasty, nasty person. If I believed what everyone else told me. I mean, I've just been through another process of being totally... sort of flattened out by the prosecution lot. Everything's my fault, basically, for existing. Hump to that. So, stand firm. Of course I'm not perfect, thank you. For heaven's sake, it's a work in progress. Take up your cross and follow me each day. Of Christ's words, in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. I was so furious with this blasted business with the neighbours. One Saturday I was staying in the block of flats near a different solicitor. I dismissed the first one down in Sunderland, which is south of Newcastle. And I just, I wouldn't pray because I was just fuming about the whole business. I, completely calmed down from that. And in my defence statement, I absolutely state, and it is how I am about the situation, I forgive these neighbours. 
whatever is in their hearts to have done what they've done. I forgive them. Amen. Right, so I try and progress on to happy thoughts. Well, stand firm is a beautiful thought. Yes, there are troubles in the world. There's always been troubles. Yes, prices are rising, but I mean, you can't get sugar apparently in Russia. Well, actually, quite frankly, too much sugar isn't any good for you, is it? There's a food program on Radio 4 and they were discussing uh, processed foods and, you know, the amount of salt and sugar added to cheap sort of food stuffs. But paradoxically, yet again, the poor people suffering, they, they can, you know, they buy this cheap processed food. It's on offer and available now. It's just uh, delivered at home and all the rest of it. <coughs> the well-to-do keep buying their beautiful, you know, organic food. Well, all food used to be organic, for heaven's sake. I avoid organic just on principle. It just gives me, well, anyway, that's another ramble, ramble, rambly, ramble, ramble. Right, so Stanford is, is beautiful, actually. What are one's little troubles? You know, I turn on my tap, and it happened that Northumbrian water, I find out, is owned by some Chinaman in Hong Kong. So I'm paying whatever, 10% extra or something, to line fat cat shareholders. I've still got to have the water. Yes, but the fact is, I can just walk to the kitchen there and turn on the tap and I get beautiful, fresh, clean, potable, drinking water out of it. It's a lot better than this Mariupol place in Ukraine. But that's going on. Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, the whole of Africa. So, sort of linked in with count one's blessings. The rest of me works, thank you very much, more or less. A bit creaky. <laughs> this blasted neighbour actually said, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> just, just what you need to hear. I remember I called my old dears sort of old once and <laughs> less of the old. <laughs> Mother made it to 95, for heaven's sake. My mother. My dear old dad went at uh, 86 years old. They were wonderful, my parents. So I'm blessed. I have all that sort of blessing in my early life. Right, so let the old monks get on with it. I admire and respect them hugely. It's not for me. I'm out here in the world, sort of fighting my little corner of it, trying to make this world a better place for my passing, for heaven's sake. By doing this, it's all I seemingly can do. Yes, I meet people all the time. And I really do work at trying to be better at just being ordinarily pleasant to those I meet. I talk to people, and more often than not, I bring my love of God through Christ into the conversation, because that is what I have to offer the world. This beauteous, wondrous love of God through Christ. Amen. <laughs> oh, monks. <laughs>